the voice of God sounds from the word of God when we study God's word when we look at God's word the voice of God sounds from God's word and the voice of God is a cure to the noise of life <laughs> The voice of God is a cure to the noise of sickness. The reason why that stagnation in your career is there is because it has not had the voice of God. Once I've God spoken, twice I've had that power belong to God. So that power is surviving because the voice is not yet sounding. If you have access to the voice, you will terminate that noise. This morning, every negative voice in your life, I sound the voice of God that they are subdued in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the grace of God, we started teaching series yesterday captioned, Unveiling the Fundamentals of Success. And like we are told, and as you have started in the course of the month, the theme of the month has been declared, I am redeemed for exploits. Shall we echo it together? Say it again. Don't say it. Confess it into your life. And so shall it be. And the clue, I mean, the scriptural background of, of where we're picking it from is from Daniel 11, 32. They that do know their God shall be strong. Say it. Don't ever think the scripture you know is all that is important. It is the scripture that you understand that brings about the I mean, reality of what you think you know. Not all that carries Bible ever reflects Bible. Not all that carries Bible ever reflects Bible. Many preach the Bible, but the Bible is still like a mystery in their lives. Because there's no proof of the fact that they know the Bible. That's why you see people, they quote scriptures. Go, 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 go. But their life is not reflecting the quotes. They that do know not they that used to know. They that do know. Not they that claim to know. They that do know. That word in English, from my own understanding, is continuous present tense. They that do know their God. They are the ones that have strength to do exploits. So, I'd like us to review and evaluate ourselves and ask yourself, do I know God as expected or I claim to know God? Let me say something here. I was saying to some of our people that were praising, praying, I mean praying yesterday after the service, just to thank God for the service. I told them, I said, your future is, you are living in your future in the now. Let me explain. The future of your past is what you are seeing here. The future of your past is what your life is showing now. And the future of your present is what you do now. When you want to evaluate your, I mean, evaluate your past, I mean, the future of your past, evaluate your now. And if you must explain or project into your future, analyze your now. But your knowledge in the past is the reason for where you are in the present. And your knowledge in the present determines your exploit in the future. So the question is, ask yourself, do I know God as expected or I claim to know God? Because, like I said, yesterday by the grace of God, Success is not a native of any nation. Success is not a native of any country. Success is not a native of, is, it is not, is not connected to a particular course of study. There's some people, they feel, if I don't study medicine, I can't make it. Some people believe, if I don't study music, I can't make it. Success does not have to do with a particular course you must do. It has to do with the God you must know. Glory to God. Tonight, I believe God will show us what we need to know. In the name of Jesus Christ. And like we said, Saturday, unveiling the fundamental of success. 
And we started by talking about the keys to the kingdom. The keys that opens the door. The keys that initiate new things. The keys that gives us access to success. And yesterday, we focused majorly on the force of vision. The force of vision. And among others, we made mention that, okay, without vision in life, shame becomes the available option. Without vision, then your life will be full of stagnation. Without vision, there is no direction. Imagine somebody um, just leaving church. He said, where are you going? He said, I'm just going. Where are you going? I'm going. When are you coming back? I'm just going. Now, when there is no vision, a journey becomes, ends up in frustration. Imagine you enter your car, you're just going. To where? By the time the fire stops, you know that you, you are not going anywhere. So we need to understand that without vision, frustration is inevitable. Frustration shall not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say a better amen. amen. I'd like us to go and review yesterday, you know, teaching. And check yourself. Am I running with a vision? Or am I running an ambition? Am I running with a vision? Or am I a victim of association? Am I running with a vision? And when I came to ministry, by privilege, by the grace of God, some individuals, when I was privileged to be where I was, when they see God's servant coming, that's when they would not start walking. Go, 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 go. They do their suits like this, you know? So they think they're walking. <laughs> ah! And God spoke to me in the corner of my office. He said, never try to please him. Always try to please me. As long as you are pleasing me, even if it doesn't please him at the moment, it will still please him at the end. That's why, you see, for the fact that they are pastors, they are pastors, they are pastors, they are pastors. They are bishops and they are bishops. They are apostles and they are apostles. They are doctors and they are doctors. So if you run with the vision, God spoke to me some time ago. He said, you see, you are not in a competition. You are in a journey to different destinations. Direct voice from God. So if you don't have vision from God, anybody can cut, anybody can cut your life short. Because it is the vision of God from God that guarantees your protection. Remember I once shared out with us when last year when there were some you know, issues and I said God spoke to me that I'm inside you like a mountain. What can, he said, have you ever had, and he asked me, he said, what is that a mountain? I said, I don't know, is it not stone? He said, no. No volcano can carry a mountain. No flood can carry a mountain. He said, I'm the one inside you like a mountain. You see, there are some things when you hear from God as vision, it gives you strength in the midst of assaults. It gives you immunity against every adversity. That's why to have vision from God is your strength in the day of challenges. If God does not send you, I'm telling you, you'll be sent back. So, ensure, check the, the teaching of yesterday and review. If I must succeed, Am I running a vision or am I running on illusion? Am I running on a vision or am I under a spell? You know, when they are remote, remoting somebody's life, he may not even know. He's just doing things and doing things. And to him, he's right. If you see a madman, a madman is always right. He's always right in his own senses. Why? Because he does not know. He's running another man's vision. I pray the Lord will open our eyes tonight. Amen. Today we shall be focusing on the force of faith. Remember? Unveiling the fundamentals of success. It is one thing to have vision. It is another thing to have faith. Success is your battle in Christ. Which means you are a potential success. Success is my birthright in Christ. Success is your battle in Christ. Which means potentially I am a success. For example, think about it. Just like a prince does not need to pray. A prince does not need to pray to become a king. He is a potential king. A prince does not need to pray that I'll be a king. No. He is potentially a king. It's a matter of growing. And growing as expected. 
no matter how, if you behave anyhow, there are some things that will become a taboo for you to become a king. If you step into some issues. In the same vein, every child of God is a child of a success, successful creator. So we carry, we have the heritage of success, but not without the standard of the one who initiated the success. For example now, to become a king, there are standards. Even though you're a prince, there are standards. Even though you're a prince, there are some things the land does not permit. There are some things that is not permitted in a society. You must become a king. There are some things you must do. In the same way, to, to, to mature, to inherit, to possess your right of success in Christ, the force of faith is a requirement. Hebrews 11, 6. For we the, he that will come to him must believe that he is and is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. For without faith, it is impossible to even behold God. It is impossible to walk with God. It is impossible to walk with God. So, without faith, you can't take your right in Christ. Because the standard is that Faith is what gives you access to God. For example, we have not seen God, but we believe him. Nobody has seen God as it were, but we believe him. That's faith. We accept Jesus that we cannot see. That's faith. No one of us has seen Jesus. We didn't see Jesus before we gave our life to Christ. That's faith. We believe him. That's the reason why he's working with us. We believe him. That's why he, we are, he, I mean, we have access to him because that is his standard. Without faith, it's impossible to even attract God's presence. Remember, Romans 14, verse 23. Whatever is being done without faith is a sin. So when you are out of faith, you are out of reach to God because God is not a sinner. So when God does anything for you without your faith, it becomes a sinner. And God forbid God is a sinner. So, it will always require the hand of God to deliver the plan and the purpose of God. It will always require the hand of God to deliver the plan and the purpose of God. None of us is a destitute. We are all chain of destiny. Say amen. amen. I don't care how you were being brought up. I don't care your foundation. I don't care what they say concerning you. I don't care who said what. What matter most is what has God spoken to us about that power belongs to God. And who is there speaking and coming to pass when the almighty has not spoken. So God has a final say. But you must be ready to follow his standards. So it will always require the hand of God to deliver the plan of God. He said the thought I have towards you is the thought of good, not of evil, to give you an expected end. So God has a plan. Remember, to every of God's projects, there are already ordained budgets. Before God created you, he has budgeted your destiny because he said in his word, he said, I'm the Lord that declared the end from the beginning. I declare the end. So God knows your end. And he has prepared for the end. That is the iPhone of your life. You know, the summary of life is an iPhone. You know, in English, it's what they call iPhone. iPhone is the dash. 1960 to 2020. That's the dash. You know, the right 1960. Dash 2020. So that dash is what your life is all about. The dash of your life. God has finished it. He has, he has segmented it. When you are to marry, he has ordained it. Everything. That's why we are to discover. We are not, I mean, we are not to, de we are not to determine. Every stage of our life, God has prepared. But our responsibility is to discover on how to pursue. So, to every of God's plan and purpose, it will always grab God's hand. First Kings chapter 8, verse 15. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto, my, unto David my father, and with his hand has fulfilled it. Saying, Who has kept with thy servant? I mean, now verse 24 now. First Kings 8, 15 and 24. 
who has kept the, with thy servant, my, my father, that thou promised him, thou speakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thy hand. The hand of God is all we need to fulfill the plan of God. But what moved the hand of God is our faith. Isaiah 53 verse 1. The Bible says, who has believed our report? To whom the arm of the Lord is revealed. Who has believed a report? To whom the arm? So, your faith is what plucks out God's hand in your direction. Your faith is what attracts, no matter how, think about it. God spoke to God's servant, God spoke to him, 1982, April 10. That at the base of this ministry, there shall be a 50,000 capacity tent. He spoke to him in 1950. I mean, 1982. And uh, in 1998, when the instruction came that we are moving to Canaan land, according to him, like we were told, he, 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 he never, I mean, he only reconnected later. That, ah, wait, wait, wait. It was when they were doing the plan. Say, wait, wait, wait. He went to check the prophecies. And it's called the, ah, ah. God said, the, because they wanted to increase it to 52 or whatever, whatever. He said, no, 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 no. God spoke about this matter, 82. As in, he even forgot himself that in terms of, so it was not as if he planned it or he initiated it or he premeditated it. No. He came to knowledge that, come, 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 come. Let's go and check it. That's why it's good to have diaries. He went to check. Come, God spoke this issue this number of years ago. At the base of this ministry, there shall be a tent that will house 50,000. Look at the number of years after. 82 to 98. But the mouth of God spoke it. The hand of God delivered it. Glory to God. And you see, whatever the hand of God does, will always stand out in the midst of all. That, I mean, edifice, entered Guinness Book of Record, the largest church in the world, because we serve the largest God. So, when God speaks, he speaks according to his size. When God speaks, he speaks according to his capacity. When God speaks, he speaks according to his hand. You know, by virtue of whatever, 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 around church, and when the issue of transport comes up and stuff like that, I keep remembering what God told me when I was coming to ministry. He says, I will build my church. And when he told me about the eye, the eye is as long as from the sky to the earth. <laughs> that eye. You see, revelation is personal, sir. You can read Bible, it's fine. But when God speaks to you through the Bible, it's huge. Say, I, when I had the I, before I even came to ministry, when I was about coming, he said, I will. The I is as long. <laughs> the way he showed me, it's as long from the sky to the earth. So inside that height is him. Inside the I is the supplies. Inside the I is the provision, is the revelation. Is the eye is the answer? Is the eye is the provision? So, as long as you have the depth of what the eye contains, you can't lack anything good. That's why it's one thing to have the vision, it's, a, it's another thing to have the revelation that will compel your conviction in the vision. Many have vision, only, only few have the revelation of the vision. Many people have plans, they have visions. How many have the revelation of their vision? The difference between one that is called and another one that is called is the depth of the vision. Like Bishop A was saying at the Utah Life Convention that was just being concluded. He said when God called our father Bishop Edebu, many were also called. But the difference is clear today. Many were also called. I read one story that our father once told us. I used to have a friend that um, when they were called to ministry, 
that person is a, is a man of God or a no man of God. Archbishop Bates in the house of blessed memory was their spiritual father. So, anytime this other man of God wants to do anything, he always wants to go to Archbishop Bates in the house to ask for ah, money. And our father Bishop Bates said, no, don't do that. If you start out with your ministry, you will do that forever. Revelation. Faith. Revelation. Now, every time it goes, every time it goes. So, one day, Archbishop Bates in the house of blessed memory asked Papa to come to a place and he got there. He said, enter that room. Check. You know, gang must go of money. The gang must go is a big sack. Take as much as you want. Papa said, he said, I don't want. What do you mean? I'm your scripture father. You may don't care. I can't give you money. No, sir. I don't want fish. Teach me how to fish. I don't want fish. Teach me how to fish. That's all I want. Now, it takes a man of faith to make such declaration. Take the money. I said, I don't want. Take as much. And Archbishop is <laughs> one of the like the richest pastor in his days. When he was alive. Take as much as you want. Say, no. I don't want the fish. Teach me how to fish. The knowledge of how to fish has made him the richest pastor in the world today. The knowledge of how to fish. Remember, faith is empty without revealed word. Faith is empty without revealed word. So, he had the revelation of what they call faith. So, I like us to understand and the other man of God now, you can't compare winners and that ministry. Not to, but to let you know that what you trade with determines if you'll be a treasure or a trash. He got it on the platform of the force of faith. I don't want you to give me, teach me. You see, give me, give me mentality will make a power. Teach me, teach me, the mentality will make you prosper. Choose one. I keep saying about this free transport, free transport. We've been talking about it. Give me, give me mentality. If I say I will give rice to everyone that comes here today now, or groceries, people will come here, isn't it? They will load more people because of give me, give me mentality. Give me, give me mentality will make a pauper. Teach me, teach me mentality will make you prosper. Choose one. When you are taught, you are made. When you keep receiving, you are losing. Because now, integrity and dignity will be going down. Please go for knowledge to grow your faith. Like the books of the month has been declared, let's go for them. To enhance the quality of our knowledge. Don't ever think you know if it has not started showing Think you know about prosperity if you are not reflecting it. Don't claim you are successful if you cannot show any success. Don't claim you are there when you there's nothing to show for it. No, I cannot be sick. And every day you go to hospital. No, my children cannot. You know, you see, Paul said, First Corinthians two four. He said, my words to you and my teaching, they are not in the enticing of men's wisdom, but demonstration. Look at yesterday. I said, let's go for healing raid. Let's go and show the people that Jesus is Lord. Let's follow Act 10 38. And God did it as usual. So if you must be successful, understand that it requires the hand of God to develop the plan of God. But the faith you have in God's word is what will pluck out the hand of God in. Tonight, I see God growing our faith to a greater height in the name of Jesus Christ. So, it is by faith we tap into the power of God to deliver his plan and purpose for our lives. It is by faith. It is by faith. It is by faith. It is by faith. Luke 145. 
The Bible says that blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of that which the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I remember by the grace of God, when I was, when I got to the school, I eventually graduated from. Before I got to the school, I've shared it here before. When I got to the school, students used to, I mean, have extra year. I don't know what they call it here. Extra year, you know, the course is also supposed to use four years, but you can use six years. Because of some sadist lecturers. Extra year. Ah. So when I got to the school, I had a story. And I told my department mate, I said, watch, me I've come. By the grace of God, everyone in my because they made me the class rep. I said, everyone in my department is graduating with me. Everybody, we are graduating together. <laughs> they looked at me like this. What do, what do you what do you know? They that do, do know their God shall be strong. And I said, let's see. And I told them, the journey begins. Then I initiated a fellowship, a small group, and other department. And also in my department, I selected like seven group of people who pray together. Pray on the land. Fasting and pray on the land. And uh, we were doing that. By the time we got to 300 level, the VC, vice chancellor of the school, suddenly, they just changed them. Suddenly. And even those who were having carryover, they were already mocking me, you see. I thought they said, we all graduate. Nonsense. Blah, blah, blah. As they changed him like this, the new visa that came for us in, in our final year, said that general waiver, general waiver for everybody. Or they call it um, must go, let them go. Something I've forgotten. So they let them go. Everybody, including those who failed, some failed three, four courses. They waited for them. just because somebody stood in faith five years ago. It is faith in God. In fact, it got to a point. If you go to my department, even the college I finished from, just mention my nickname. They will remember. They can't forget. Because now, if you stand with God, a majority. If you stand with God, you're a majority. If you stand with God, you're a majority. As long as God is there, victory is sure. Just be sure God is there. As long as the hand of God is there, testimony is unquestionable. I don't know what you're thinking about yourself right now. Maybe you're hopeless. The good news is this. God never created any useless. Mm -mm. So in case you look helpless, God never created anyone helpless. Because he said, I will send you help from Zion. So in case, it seems, seems as if your future is bleak. It's a lie. God knows your end from the beginning. And he says, the end I have towards you is a thought of good, not of evil. So, all you need, open up and let the hand of God enter in. Open up and let God's word assess you. Glory to God. But the challenge of some of us is that we choose to believe men we see as against God we cannot see. The God we cannot see is more real than the men we see. We choose to believe what men say as against what God has written before we are formed. We choose to believe circumstances and situations around us as against the destiny he has prepared. Say I'd like you to know, if you don't cooperate with God, you can operate at the class of God. If you cannot cooperate with God, you cannot operate at the class of God. Your cooperation is your faith. Your cooperation is your faith. Once you start engaging faith, you start operating in the class of God. When you start cooperating with faith, I don't care what money you are owing. I don't care what debt is pressing you down. I don't care the landlord harassing you. If your faith in God is not shaking, the victory is so sure in Christ. Hallelujah. One testimony happened yesterday night when one of us sent me a message yesterday night. She said, according to her, that when they were to collect offering, she checked her bag and there was no coin. 
She checked and checked and checked. Second time she checked again, she didn't see anything. So she said, God, I wish you give me money for this offering. You see, God respect is his prayer. I wish you give me money for offering. And the queen said, as the basket was about to get to her place, she opened the bag again without checking anything. She found 10 rand. Without checking again, don't look at the amount of the money. Look at the mystery and the miracle behind it. Don't look at the amount. The amount is not important. Because the God that brought 10 rand can bring 10 million rand. The God that brought 10 rand can bring 10,000 rand. Now, she said without checking, I mean, without struggling, she saw 10 rand lying there. Ah. He said, it's not the same bag. I just checked now. He said, now I understand that God is alive. You see, God has changed. See, okay, if you, somebody may be doubting. Maybe she didn't check well. No, if human beings can use brain. You see, you run in, didn't check well. If you check well, that money was somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Those are doubting Thomas. It's a lie. If you have checked well, that money is somewhere. It's a lie. Pastor, forget that one. This is not a testimony. You know, a foolish man says there's no God. Okay, how did fish money come out from the mouth of a fish? But she believed. That's why she checked the bag again. She believed. That's why after the prayers, she checked the bag and turned and came out. Saints, your, your, your case is not closed. I decree whatever looks impossible between now and tomorrow evening, it shall be a testimony. The same God who brought that ten round in the bag where there was no money, where you will never imagine God will send you help from, the Lord will send you help in the name of Jesus Christ. Saints, God is still doing wonders. Ten round from a bag where there's no money. Ten round from a bag where there's no money. Like I said, don't look at the amounts. Look at the miracle. Don't consider the amount. Consider the mystery behind the generation of the money. Between now and tomorrow, God will surprise you. Amen. Say a better amen. amen. Say a stronger amen. amen. Now, there are giants in everyone's promised land, but it is by faith we quench all the fairy that of the devil. There are giants in every man's you know, promised land. There are giants. When, by the grace of God, a great ministry got to Canaan land. They were, you hear Papa saying that the land has swallowed up enough blood. Enough blood. That is the blood of Jesus. Sprinkling. Blood sprinkling. Anointing. Jars of oil. Drums of blood. All manner. Because we need to conquer. The reason why you are called a winner is because you are expected to be a fighter. I am a winner in the Lord Jesus. You must be a fighter in the Lord Jesus. You know, it's so sweet to say I'm a winner. To be a winner is, is, is not just a cheap talk. It's hard work. So when you say a winner, always recognize that behind the winner is always a ring. Before you come, you must have passed through the ring and come out successfully. So if you fail to recognize the place of the fight, you have, you have potentially failed to be a winner. So in every man's promised land, in every man's promised land, <laughs> there are giants. Like I was sharing yesterday, mostly or recently, that last year my bones were soft by attack. I have never had in my life that bone became soft. Because the devil is angry that what who is this person that God is using to cast out man of spirit to free people to do one, two, three, four. But you see, the Bible says, Don't be troubled. In this world, you shall face tribulations. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome. Which means you are more than a conqueror. Say amen. amen. Say, I am more than a conqueror. Amen. Numbers chapter 13, from verse 25 to 30. We know the story of. Joshua and Caleb, they were being confronted with the Amalekites. And if you look at the story, it's the, 12, the 10 spies went and they saw. They said, no, these people are stronger than us. 
They, we are like grasshoppers in their eyes. We are like what you see determines what you have. We are like grasshoppers in their sight. So if you see yourself as a grasshopper, you end up being eaten, you know, by reptiles. See yourself more than a conqueror. Remember the illustration that we have shared here before about the man in the ring? I'm sure you will know about it. Now you see in the story where Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 38, where the Bible says we are more than conquerors. Jesus, the man who has a wife, you know, and the, the man is a wrestler. And the man is contesting for a 10 million round, I mean 10 million pound, you know, belt. And as a woman, as a woman was, he couldn't go to the, you know, to the, to the tournament because of the fact that he doesn't want to, he wants to watch TV. TV, they are beating the husband. Po, pa, po, pa. Ah, she said, Yeah, my husband, yeah, yeah, my husband, yeah. He's feeling for the husband. The teeth came out, the eyes came out. But eventually, somehow, somehow, strange strength came and the husband rose up and finished the opponent. But by the time the husband won, has gone. Four teeth have gone. Now the hand is like this. Now, they say, The winner is, Hey, Mr. Clement. Hey. The wife told me, 10 million. But for six months, the husband is on hospital bed. The wife, the man is a conqueror. The wife is more than conqueror. The man in that context is Jesus. We are the wives. So Jesus fought for us. Jesus won for us. Jesus made us a giant in the midst of ants. By virtue of the price he paid for us. But this mentality is important. Otherwise, you keep struggling. You must know what Christ did. Otherwise, you will never enjoy the blessings of redemption. We are more than conquerors. Glory to God. But it is through faith we can subdue kingdoms. Through faith, we can tear territories. Through faith, we can establish God's pre or then cancel. I remember years back, this revelation God gave me has been ruling my life. I have this mentality. Many are the thoughts, the cancels in the heart of a man, but surely God's cancel shall stand. No matter what you think about me, no matter what you do to me, as long as I hold on to this scripture, future is sure. Many are the thoughts in other man, but surely the counsel of the Lord. In fact, when I first came to ministry, some pastors, my pastor friend, they used to call me Pastor God's Counsel. Pastor God's Counsel. Because I say it, because that is the revelation God gave me, that I am too sure. If, you, if God did not ask for you or ask from you before He created me, you cannot impart negatively on my destiny. So, uh, your faith in God's preordained counsel will secure your place in destiny. Your faith in God's preordained counsel. Your faith in God's preordained counsel. I don't care. Maybe you're a product of one night. It doesn't matter. That one night is God's intention to help others who are victims of one night not to think they are hopeless. So don't ever think your case is different in the context of negativity. Always know that your case is different in the context of positivity. God has a plan for you. And that plan will surely come to pass. Yeah. I said that plan will surely come to pass. Yeah. That plan will surely come to pass. Yeah. No matter what they've said against you, what God has written concerning you shall come to pass. Yeah. No matter what situation is speaking against you, what God has written concerning you shall come to pass. Yeah. 